All right, let's make this into this. We start by taking the horns out of their respective bags. The control horns on the 67 edge are the same shape, but the rudder one's just slightly shorter. Rough up the part that gets inserted in the surface so the glue sticks to it better. Don't forget to dry fit all the horns into the surfaces before you use any glue. You'll thank me later. Time for glue. I like Loctite 608 because it's clear and dries fast and just in case, denatured alcohol. Almost forgot to mention, horns go towards the hinge line. Don't put them in backwards or you're gonna be really upset. While I'm waiting for the horns to dry, I like to move on to the fuselage. I'll start by putting glue inside the slot and putting that tab all the way in place. It's keyed for a perfect fit. And don't be shy. That epoxy is what's holding that stab in place no matter what you throw at it. Because it's keyed, fitment's easy. Just make sure you've slid that stab all the way forward. None of the wood will be exposed and completely covered up and you'll see that the elevator will move freely. A Little bit more epoxy before I put the filler block in place. Once you've got it in there, just pop that in, slide it flush and let it do its thing. Rudder installation is made easier than ever with a single pin that slides through the new flat style hinges. A lot stronger, still light and effective. Since we need to secure the rudder wire, now's a good time to put on the tail wheel. You're gonna need a 1.5 Allen driver as well as a small Phillips. Screws are in the bag, everything goes right in place. With the tail wheel in place, now's a good time to go over all the grub screws to make sure nothing disappears at the worst possible time. And don't forget about this one, unless you don't like steering. Time to do the landing gear. Make sure you've got everything you need before you get started. When you're putting a landing gear in place, Make sure you've got the flat edge forward with the taper at the back. A little bit of Loctite on the four bolts and you're good to go. The gear cuffs are gonna fit better one way than the other. Make sure that the larger, wider, flatter part goes on the belly with a shorter, rounder part on the outside. When it's time to secure the gear cuffs, I like to mark with a Sharpie first. I'll slide up that cuff and score the surface just with a little bit of sandpaper so it gives the glue something to stick to. A little bit of your favorite contact cement will help put that in place. And then when you're done, slide it down and hold it down with tape. A 10 mil wrench and a seven mil box end are what you're gonna to want to tighten up the axles. Probably the coolest thing about the new Extreme Flight hardware is this flat spot. So that way when you tighten the grub screw on the collar, it's got a hard spot already flattened in there. Slide the wheel on the axle and secure with the collar. Wheel pant goes in place and held there with just a single bolt. Oh yeah, don't forget to do the other side. When it's time to mount the motor, it's only four bolts to lock it in place. Drop of Loctite makes sure that they don't go anywhere. For ease of installation, the AM670 is a two-part configuration. You can remove the front part with three bolts around the perimeter of the base. Make sure that you secure all four bolts, slide the motor back in place, and double check that you have those three bolts secure or your motor is going to come off at the worst possible time. Trust me, we've heard it. When it's time to mount the ESC, I flip the plane over so we can get to the mounting pad. It's secure from the factory, but I like to do a little bit of the NCA to make sure it's really secure. It's not necessary, but I like to secure my ESC with a little extra double-sided tape. Luck favors it prepared. When using the T-Motor Power Combo, all you have to do is match up the colors from the motor to the ESC. Secure everything with zip ties and then secure it to the airframe. You want to clip those wires before you move on. One of my favorite features on the 67 Edge is this simple tube that guides the wire from the ESC back to the receiver pad. It's neat little things like that that help us raise the bar. The 67 Edge comes with baffles already pre-installed and a negative pressure lip on the bottom. There's nothing to do except for bolt it on. We're gonna use these heavy duty wood screws to mount the cowl. What's cool is there's a nylon insert to make sure that they thread in tight and stay that way. Just like that, fits like a dream. When it's time to mount the spinner, it's critical you use that bushing, otherwise the spinner will wobble all over the place. With the back plate in place, you can put the prop on, the prop washer, the first nut, and the, most importantly, the secondary nut to make sure everything stays locked in place. With the prop all locked in, it's just four bolts to put the spinner in place. Time for servos. We're going to use all the hardware that comes with them, as well as the 1.25 arms, and then when we get to each surface, all the bags are pre-labeled with everything you need. Easy step before you put in servos or servo screws is hardening the holes. Make sure you use a little bit of thin CA in each hole, that way they stay rock solid. When it's time to do linkages, it's easier than you think. Start off with a set of vice grips to hold the link in place, and then I'll get the ball link and just spin it by hand until it starts to bite. Once it's hooked, 
Then I'll hold that and spin the vice grips until the linkage is at the desired length. Usually I start with them turned all the way in and just out as necessary. Repeat with the other side and you're good to go. Here's something that makes life a lot easier. Get yourself a magnetic parts tray. This one's three bucks at Harbor Freight. I like it because it keeps everything in one place so you know what's left and you can magnetize your tool tip. So if you drop anything, just pick it right up. Anything to make the job easier. Dropping in the servo is a piece of cake. There's a tube that takes the extension all the way out to the root end. When you do the linkage, make sure you set it up at the one inch location and not all the way out of the 1.5. By moving in, you'll have better mechanical advantage as well as getting better geometry. You'll see that I've got a 1.5 driver here and then a four mil box in to tighten down the hardware. And then although this is threaded, you'll still wanna make sure you use the lock nut on the bottom. Make sure to do the other side and you're all set. Other aileron goes together the same way. One thing you'll notice is that there's a step on this ball link. That should be used on the arm side so that way it gets a linkage off of there so it doesn't bind at full deflection. Other side uses a standard ball link with a standard brass insert. Other than that, it's pretty easy. When it's time to do the rudder, I like to lay the plane on the side. That way it doesn't roll off anywhere and it's easy to work with. What you'll see is the servo, the output shaft is pointing forward, and then you've got that arm 90 degrees, and then the linkage goes in from the top. That way when you get full deflection, you still have good mechanical geometry. I'm at the 1.25 location. Other than that, no surprises. Elevator install is the same as the rudder. We just flip the plane over, still laid on the table so it's easy. Hook up the linkage exactly the way it is at the 1.25 arm. And other than that, you're done. Now the servos are in place, you bring everything to the middle and plug them into the receiver in their respective channels. Also, make sure to use the included capacitor to take the load off the ESC. All these little grommets are included in the kit and probably my favorite is this one that comes pre-installed for your XT90 plug. If you're gonna use a pilot, make sure you select a 115 millimeter pilot. It's as easy as two thumb bolts to get them in place or your choice of hardware. Using a 4,000 to 5,000 milliamp pack, this is where it's gonna be. So make sure you put your Velcro in place and the strap of your choice. I'm using the T-Motor strap that came with my motor and speed controller. CG is indicated at the mark there, but for my personal flying style, I like it a little bit more forward. Adjust that battery position to get the CG of your choice and then go have some fun. When it's time to put your wings on, put your servo lead through and plug it into the extension. Make sure the wing is slid all the way in place. You'll see the stud pokes all the way through so that way when you lock it in place, you've got a solid connection. Double check to make sure that the wing's there and it's not gonna come off at the worst possible time, otherwise you're good to go. The canopy is held on by the tabs on the front as well as these two spring latches. You'll just wanna move those forward, drop it in place, and make sure it's slid all the way back. Verify that they're in place and you should be good to go. Getting the side force generators together is easy. You'll take the easy assembly bolt, Put the o-ring in place and make sure you do that to both of them once you've got those in place you can get the spacer on that goes against the wing side just like that and they go thread them on the airplane the sfgs will also come with these little protectors that way when you put them in place and you tighten and loosen the bolts repetitively it doesn't tear up the covering all it takes is a little dab of contact cement to hold them in place sfgs are made easy to use with the help of this little keyhole shape you'll thread these in place get them to the little protective spacer, slide them back, and then tighten them down. Once you've done that to both, you're ready to fly. The edge is ready to fly, but if you want that extra little something, make sure and use the pre-cut decals in there. You can see they've actually been expertly cut at the factory, so that way all you have to do is peel them off and stick them in place like a regular sticker. Almost forgot. Ooh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 